Connection pooling is a pattern of creating a pool of available connections, usually TCP, and allow multiple clients to share this pool of connections. This pattern is usually very useful when connection establishment and connection tearing down, connection security is particularly expensive, which is the case with databases, right, right guys? And uh, that's also useful when the server has very limited number of database connections, right? And uh, you have a lot of clients, so what do you do, right? In this video, we're gonna learn how first, how to do this classically by basically creating a, a REST API that when you make a GET request, you establish a connection in the back end, a database connection, and then make a query and then close it. It's like the old, really bad way of doing things, right? But it's a stateless, nevertheless, right? So another way we're gonna do it is like, we're gonna spin up a pool of database connections and use a stateless query pool and see uh, like, we're gonna, we're gonna just call the pool.query, which will pick up a random connection okay, from this pool, and then execute our query. So that's what we're gonna, and then finally we're gonna uh, perform some performance numbers between the uh, stateless approach, which is like every request opens and closes the database connection at the backend, and the pool connection pooling request. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and in this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you wanna become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. With that said, let's just jump into this video. All right guys, so I have locally here a Postgres database and I have PG admin and I used uh, Docker to do all of that stuff. If you're interested to know how to do that, I'm gonna reference the video that we have done in this channel. I'm not gonna go through that. And I have a, a Postgres database here with a database called uh, Hussein DB, and I have a table called employees, and those are the employees. And here's the old approach of doing things, guys. All right, guys, so I have here an, an REST endpoint that I have written, and uh, this hits the back end, which we're gonna show the code in. And uh, what that does is every time I hit enter, it makes a git request to this slash all, which in turn establishes a database connection with the Postgres database, execute the query select star from employees, return the rows, and then closes the database connection. Every single request does that, okay? So, and that's what we get back. Beautiful rest of JSON with all that fancy dandy stuff, right? So, what we're gonna do here is, uh, it also tells you like the elapsed how long it took and uh, the method that's like, I just added some meta more metadata here. So let's go over to the code and show you that how we used to do things. And we have built a lot of code using that approach, right? All right guys, so this is the back end here, all right? And uh, I'm using Express, obviously, and the PG library, which we have discussed in this uh, videos before. I'm gonna reference the video, guys, if you're interested, wanna know like how do we do that from scratch, right? Because I'm not gonna dive details into this. I'm just gonna go through it real quick, All right? So you can just check out that video that we did, the introduction to Postgres and Node.js. So what we do is like get a client and when someone is execute slash all, we just stab, uh, snaps the time before the execution, open the connection to the database, just provide the library. So that's the database, the same username, password, port, all that stuff, and then, connect that establishes the TCP connection. So there's like a three-way handshake and all, all that jazz going on, the protocol handshake. That's expensive, that's very expensive, right? But we're doing it. Every GET request, we're doing that. And then we establish a query. We make a query to the database. That's the worst query ever. Never, 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 ever, ever do this, right? In production, select star is bad enough and unbounded query is even worse, right? always have you you'd have to do proper paging with with these kind of thing uh, you get back the results printed in a nice table like that close the connection also expensive right just like releasing the file descript descriptor and all that stuff and then get a new time because we're just done get the elapsed time and then return the rows and just tell me how long it took right and that's it very simple stuff. So how can I rewrite this using the pooling approach? So let's go ahead and create a brand new file called pool. Yeah, okay, so I created this full pool.js. And here's what we're gonna do. We are just gonna copy the whole code, same thing, because it's, it's very minor, the changes really here. And here's what we're gonna do. And instead of creating a client, we're gonna create the pool. We're gonna get the pool class. And instead of doing, creating a 
pool a client uh, object we're going to create a pool object and obviously this is bad to have it in the every request we want to execute it once when we start our server all right so we're going to replace the the client with the pool and here's the thing it's a pool right so how many connections do you want there's the first parameter which is called max all right and the max parameter is how many connections do you want by default the default i believe is 10 right but you can specify any number based on like how healthy you want your postgres database to be right so you specify a number and it's gonna manage those num connections so that's the maximum number of connection it will allow you to create to create you don't you don't control that anymore as a user you just ask the pool hey execute this query for me it will pick one of those 20 connections right and execute a query if there are no connections left all of them are being used or busy right you're gonna have to wait as a client right and there is a timeout for that okay and that timeout is called let's add both the both properties and let's talk about them so there's the connection timeout right after which the default is zero so how long i should wait for a pool to give me a connection if all of them are busy zero means wait forever you can you can decide to shorten this time right and the final one is the idle time i believe that the default is 10 second what idle timeout means essentially is after establishing the connection if those connections are not used when do you want me to get rid of it because it's a memory, right? So it's it's uh, staking memory. It's, it's or using these file descriptors and then staking memory. So when do you want me to destroy it? This much time after watch it will destroy. It. Zero means it will never get destroyed. Okay. So now we have the, this connection. Let's go back to our method. We don't no longer need a, a client dot connect anymore, but you can ask the pool to give you a dedicated client and then you release it right that's especially it's good for using transactions we are executing almost like a stateless squares here so i don't really care which one do you want so i'm gonna choose the pool dot query and query you ask the pool to query to execute this query and the pool will take care of which connection it will use to execute that query get back the results we really don't need to end the client because there's nothing here. And who, what we want to do here essentially is give the time and then get back there. And the method is not all just the pool method. And that's it. Let's test it out, guys. So I'm going to change the configuration to the pool.js. Let's go ahead and run. So what are we going to see? We're not going to see any different, guys, but let's, let's take a look. So if I do now slash all here, right? You didn't see any difference. It gives you the same results, obviously. But now this is using pooling. So it's actually faster because those pools are already available for you. And uh, it will going to pick that. And then there is no overhead of establishing and closing the connection every time. So that's always a better approach to do that. Okay. And the, and the Node.js, is single, since, since it is a single threaded application, it will it's a non-blocking as well. So it will despite having single thread it will manage all these connections for you without actually blocking this thing which is pretty cool stuff so what can we do to prove that this is actually good right so here's the thing i'm gonna go ahead and actually create a an older js file with both methods right so what i did is like i did a slash old method which execute our old pattern and give us the time and the average as well how long it took after i don't know the total number of executions right i'm gonna sum all the attempts and the time it took and then take the average of the time and then i'm gonna report the average over the time and then i'm gonna do the same thing with the pool right so and then on the client we're gonna execute like a hundred queries right on the pool and a hundred queries on the old and see the average between the two how about that does that sound good guys the code will be available for you guys in the description below so you don't have to like pause the video and do all that stuff so all the js is a has now it's a very interesting two endpoints slash pool endpoint to use the pool approach slash old approach to use the old approach which is always a stateless closing opening connections every time so let's go ahead and do that now we're doing the old let's go ahead and test it if i do slash old get the result if i do a slash pool i get the result still i don't see any reference but if i go to developer tools and here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a loop 
let's say 1,000 against the old. 1,000 is all that much, but sure. Execute. And you can see that it is actually querying, and you can see the average of the old is around 40 milliseconds, right? And we are getting a lot of requests. Almost done. I think done. All the 1,000 queries has been executed successfully, right? So we have created and destroyed 1,000 TCB connection in the backend, right? That's surprisingly fast, right? Especially for for a local database connection, right? If it's remote, it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna be even slower than that. So let's go ahead and change my approach to use pool. Hit the pool, right? And that will do do is like do a fetch and then just expect a JSON and then just do a fetch request. We did talk about fetch API. I'm gonna reference it if you're interested. And let's do how let's see how pool is doing. Oh, that is way better. 40 milliseconds versus 19. Oh, it's going down. Nice. So I can see, guys, it's almost like 50% faster. And I guarantee you, if you move to a remote database, like in the cloud, it's going to be even more than that, right? And the reason is like the more connections you have, it's even getting better and better, right? So it's like almost like a resource issue, right? So that's essentially our, that's our video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, Leave, uh, leave your questions below if you, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, that's a stateless query that we have uh, explained, right? So we just query. But sometimes you want to execute a series of queries in an acid manner, in an atomic manner. And to do that, you can ask the pool to give you a client and you can lock that client for you and then execute multiple queries, right? Uh, leave a comment below if you're interested to see that. I'm going to reference the code below to, into the, the Node.js doc. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends, and can see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.